Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast, produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I am Bob, and I'm exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. And today, I am going to be joined by Dr. Robert Schleip, and we're fellow Germans, um, and he knows everything there is to know about fascia. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what do I need to know about fascia? You are going to be amazed how this can affect your life. And if you're having problems with plantar fasciitis, back pain, uh, all sorts of things that you didn't think were related to fascia could be, it could be the answer to your problems. And also, if you want to stay young, you got to see this guy. I mean, he, uh, I won't tell you his age, but we'll reveal that in the, in the podcast and we'll reveal it in, on the video. You're going to be amazed. Uh, he looks a lot younger than he is, and there's a good reason for it. So uh, welcome to the show. Dr. Robert Schleip. Okay, I want to welcome to the show, Dr. Schleip. I'm so glad you joined us today. Yes, I'm very much looking forward, Bob, because I'm one of your heroes. I know you are one of my heroes. Vice I'm versa. One of your fans all the way across the Atlantic here in Munich, Germany. Awesome. And as we mentioned before, I'm also have a German background. So We'll get along just great. So let's talk about uh, treating and, tra and training fascia. Um, mm -hmm. What are your, uh, you got four training principles, basically that, that line up with the four functions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So could you talk about the training principles? Oh, sure. Yeah. So uh, the first one would be the elastic recoil capacity. That is, of course, very, very important. So you do this bouncing elastic recoil capacities. Uh, the second one would be that you uh, do end range stretches. So it means stretches where you go towards the limit, but not before. And there you include a lot of variation. So multi-directional and multi-joint stretches rather than isolated gotcha. stretches. Gotcha, yes. So, so that you have there. And the third one we already mentioned is the nutritional function. So you try to squeeze the fascial tissues lengthwise, but also perpendicular as a sponging effect. And you look for, so foam rolling would be included in that. And finally, fascia is a sensory organ. So you do exercises where your tension is not outside, catching a ball and hitting a blow, but where your attention is inside of the body so that you train your mindful body perception and you use fascial multidirectional movement to feel your body on a delicate level from the inside. So it would be the sensory perception training. And then you have all of the four pieces that most of the professional fascia trainer include into their training recommendations. Now you, I, this again is a little bit off track here, but you have in the book um, to, to try to determine what type of fascia you have. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's very helpful because um, anybody could do this. I mean, anybody can do the testing and uh, mm -hmm. determine if they were Viking or was it, like I know it's from John, uh, the upper cross. Yeah, yeah. so that cross, would be yeah. the, the crossover type. Crossover type, right. Yeah, yeah. So you have the uh, bendy wendy or yeah, the, the flexible, sure. or we call it the, the temple dancer, uh, because if you have ever seen Indian temple dance, where the women are doing with their hands incredible flower postures, if I wanted to learn that, somebody need to, to break my fingers <laughs> because sure. they can bend each finger 90 degrees backwards. But uh, in, in medicine, those people in our society would be called hypermobile. But in India, for many women, it is natural and they have sure. no problems and they become uh, uh, dancing stars. So some people have a constitutional or genetical tendency to be hypermobile or to be more mobile than others of the same age. And that was more common and still is more common in women in Asia, but not so common in men living in Scandinavia. There you find more Vikings <laughs> who sure. are prone for the Viking disease. That is a stiffening of the fascia in the uh, side of the hand and when they are 60 years 
many of them sleep with flexed hand, not because oh. the, the muscles are short, but because the fascia gets short. And that is called the Viking's disease. Gotcha. And uh, uh, many people in North America, but also in Central Europe, their ancestors have, be live, have been living, or some of their ancestors have been living in Scandinavia. <laughs> so we have the genes for it, many of sure. us. And these people tend to be more stable and more stiff. And they are not so talented to be in the first row of a yoga class. Sure. Uh, but they are made more for stability and for living in an Arctic climate where you want muscular friction in order to generate heat. So, so we have a test to find out to what degree are you a Viking or are you a hyperflexible dancer body? And then you have different recommendations. Yeah, based uh, upon that, right. Yeah. And then there is a third type that is not so much genetic, it is more your lifestyle. Right. It's based on the Czechio, Czechoslovakian, or on the Czechian uh, teacher of Vladimir Janda, and that is called the crossover type. And that is very interesting that you are stiff in some parts of your body and hyperflexible and weak in other parts of the body. Yeah. So you can find out whether you are Viking or whether you are a hyperflexible or whether you are a crossover type. Very good. Very good. So um, we're going to talk about the back now again. Um, mm -hmm. The back is obviously densely populated with pain receptors. You said yeah. the book. And yeah. so... Could you talk about how, how does that how does that present itself? Is there a way that you think uh, this person is definitely having trouble with their fascia in the back, or is it just one of thing, many things that may be happening? So when people have excruciating back pain, they usually go to a doctor, right? And, uh, they do some imaging usually. MRI or uh, X-ray to see yeah. if there's anything happening to the spine. In 15 to 20 case uh, percent, uh, the spine is, or the disc uh, as part of the spine are the cause of the low back pain. But gotcha. in 80 to 85 percent, uh, all the experts agree, the disc pathology is happening only as it happens in people of the same age, but it's not the cause of low back pain. So it means in the majority of low back pain, we have no agreement on what the cause is. But in a few years, we will have ultrasound imaging. So the same imaging that they are already doing to see whether your fascia is glued to each other in the way that I have described it right. before. And then you don't need to do surgery for the discs. Uh, you don't need to do a muscular training or to do psychotherapy. <laughs> then actually do a fascia-oriented treatment would be the best treatment of all. But we don't have the ultrasound examination yet in a reliable way. I think we are two years, maybe three years away because we need thousands of different people to know what is the average sickness for people of your age, et cetera. Well, but what we already have is indications and a fascia generated back pain spreads more. You cannot pinpoint it with a finger. Gotcha. gotcha. And, that, and that has been done in very, very nice, high quality research at the University of Heidelberg, where they injected a painful, irritating substance either into the lumbar fascia or into the lumbar muscles. And when you have muscular low back pain, you can pinpoint it. It is a small area. But fascia, back pain, you, you use your whole palm and say somewhere down there. And, can, that, and the, can that refer to it to the legs too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, if it spreads to a larger area, that is not a, a proof, but it's an indication that you more likely have fascia-generated back pain. Gotcha. And the second one is if it feels more emotional, if you have muscular low back pain, people say it's a hot pain or a cold pain, or it's a piercing pain. But if you give the same irritating substance into the lumbar fascia, they say it's a mean pain. It's an agonizing oh, weird. pain. So they use emotional description. 
And some people do that with everything, you know. So right, whenever right. they have a disappointment, they say, poor me, etc. Yes. And then don't blame the fascia. But sure. if, if, if your patient is somebody who copes well with other challenges, but since they have this new kind of back pain, they seem to become a, a different character where they complain and pity themselves, mm. etc. It may be a second indication uh, together with a bigger area of spreading and radiations that maybe they have fascia generated back pain because it fits to the overall picture that we have from different experiments. So just a, as an overall advising to try to treat this, one, they could try the stretches and the back yeah. movements you showed in the yeah. book, yeah. And, then, and then probably some foam rolling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if, it, if the foam roll, you start with a roll that doesn't feel comfortable first, where you, where you go holy moly, like four syllable exhalation. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so not ouch, but also not nice, but you go holy moly, mamma mia, <laughs> oh my gosh. I like that. Uh, so, we, so we call it a beneficial pain where you have uh, a long exhale, at least three syllables, better, better four syllables. And that would be the best foam roll if you have back pain, because already after a minute, you will realize, oh, this is not as bad as it felt in the first second you were foam rolling. So that would be a very good treatment uh, for people who have uh, low back pain that fits into these two categories. It's a, a big area. And it feels a little bit more emotional than normal muscular gotcha. pain that they have. And the third one I haven't mentioned is uh, if you stretch the lumbar fascia by going forward and the pain gets more, that would be a third indication. Yeah, um, I'll, we used to recommend not foam rolling the low back because it would jam the facets together. Is there another yeah. way to do yeah. that? Or is there a better way to do it or? Oh. Yeah, uh, you don't put the foam roll on the back and then your body weight on it. Right. You put the foam roll or foam roll ball behind the wall and you, and then the wall, and then the, so you, you oh, are not using the body wall. weight. Gotcha. You are using uh, body pressure. Right. And, and you have it behind you. Excellent. And you imagine you are bare and this is your favorite massage tree. And you want the tree to stay there, not to break away, you know. And then you, you play with different rotations and look for this good pain, for the four-syllable pain, where you go, holy moly, this feels very, very good. Gotcha. I love that. I love that. Do you, uh, do you think a massage gun would work if somebody had was helping you out? Or Yeah, uh, I, I didn't think they are very good. Uh, because uh, particularly of the gun mentality. Right. And it's not only the uh, American mentality, shoot, shoot away all right, problems. Right. And that will be the, uh, this, uh, the, the final solution of all the world's problems, shoot the pain away. <laughs> but they are amazingly efficient. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so we used to have massage sticks. They are still there. Yeah, but I since somebody about, put yes. them into this pistol arrangement, <laughs> now they have made a steep development because we have now different frequencies, yes. different amplitudes, and you have different uh, end pieces. And you can find places in your lumbar bag if you were a bear and you had a vibrating tree, you would go there more often <laughs> gotcha. if it has the right frequency. Right. Very good. Um, yeah. So I, I do recommend them. I'm just last question here. I, I'm on to be respectful of your time. We had Dr. Mike uh, Kukuzela on our show, big fan of yours, by the way. And he's a big advocate of uh, zero drop shoes are shoes with very little heel on them yeah. because they feel yeah. like uh, he, he once again developed the fascia on the feet. Are you of the same like mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, of course, uh, if I could steal everybody's shoes and, they, and teach them to barefoot walk, 
um, in the future on the beach, that would be the best. Gotcha. But even that can be too much. So barefoot walking is what nature had designed us. Yes. Uh, but it is similar if you haven't, if you are not used to it, it is as if you have been living as a chicken on the ground and you get the chicken on a big rock and you throw it into the air and say you are made to fly. The chicken will, will crash down right. and will injure themselves and will say, even if I was designed for it, I don't like it. <laughs> I and that would be that. the same if you put people's shoes away and say you are made to be a barefoot runner. Sure, you got to try. So you need to transition. slowly make the pathway sure. back. And ultimately, barefoot running is the best. I highly recommend it. But you should start with a chicken, so you have it a little gotcha. thing. And that's what you can do with these barefoot inspired uh, feet uh, or shoes, where you have a, a thin sole. And also you prevent uh, the high heel in the back so that you are more, uh, more uh, horizontal or maybe even uh, 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 further up as you're walking in the sand. Sometimes your heel is further down because then you get more natural stretch into the Achilles tendon. And as we have mentioned before, if you get more stretch in the Achilles tendon, your headache may disappear right. because of the myofascial line going all the way, all up. The way up. So there. I highly recommend it. Dr. Schleib, I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed this. This was just fantastic. Again, uh, the book, this book, by the way, he's written many of them actually, is uh, Fascial Fitness, Practical Exercises to Stay Flexible, Active, and Pain-Free in Just 20 Minutes a Week. Very, very uh, helpful. I think uh, people are going to, you know, they're going to find answers to the problems that they've been having and they, they thought it was something else. So um, thank you for your time and uh, say hi to the people of Germany. I do. And happy stair dancing. That is one of the exercises in the book. Yes. So when people are now going down the stairs, hopefully with minimal shoes, then they should have a happy down, uh, yep. happy bounce. I saw that. And, and uh, they can contribute it to my inspiration if they want. Very good. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much, Bob. Yep.